Aloha everyone and welcome to part 3 of the Star Witch Masterclass series. This video series comes to you in collaboration with Mindwork Studios who ran an awesome Kickstarter on bringing the art of Brom to the worlds of miniatures. Check back with the page, if you missed it, I bet there is a late pledge manager. In this part I will explain the start of my painting on the ghostly spirit that stands close to the Star Witch. If you're interested in earlier insights into my painting process and thoughts, check back with part 1 and part 2. Link down below. Enjoy. Introduction. Welcome to another day from my studio and my workbench. Another day, another coffee. I can tell that this project is haunting me in a good way. I see her standing in my work in progress cabinet and my mind is racing around her and how to continue in the next available painting session. I know right now I'm still in the beginning. I know for now I'm just sketching my way into the project to get a feeling for it, but creating a tribute piece means I will dive deep into the original artwork to learn from the master Gerald Brom. No pressure at all. <laughs> in the meantime, I can say I'm really enjoying to paint with the Brom Artist Acrylics. They work really nicely from, for my way of painting with wet and wet sketches and as I'm already a bit further on the full project, um, as in these videos, I can say they also work excellent for other techniques like glazing and airbrushing. Usually a painting session for me does not start with going to the studio, sitting down and painting. This process takes a while until I properly arrive in the studio. While looking at the current state of the project, I make some thoughts, write down some things, and in this case, also looking back on what I've done in the earliest, earlier session. My mind drifting away. I could also imagine the Star Witch without the ghost spirit, not making a tribute piece, just having someone else in her arms, a goblin friend, a grieving soul, a hobbit who asks something about a ring or just a cow. Slowly bringing back my mind to today's task. Thank you for enjoying this channel and supporting it by pressing thumbs up, subscribing and writing a comment. You can help this channel to grow. Arigato. Hair painting sketch. I am not a specialist in hair. Um, I could speak about a beard, but while well, painting hair, of course, it's something different. Before I advance for the ghost thingy, I decided to paint a bit more on her hair. In part two's end, I just laid down some basic colors on them and now I use the same mix from ochre and purple, but using less purple and more ochre in the mix to put the hair into a light situation in the large volumes. I'm not thinking about painting texture of hair or such at the moment. This is not important right now. This comes all later. It is just large volumes and making them more readable for the eye. Not even the color is final yet. I play around a bit and add a drop of red in the mix here and there to create a more warmth to create more warmth in the hair. I even add a gentle highlight to it to just feel it, sketching it in. Doing the hair now helps me to get into the painting mode and arriving in my workflow.
painting the ghostly spirit freaky donkey thingy with a face. Okay, seriously now, how would you name this? Write your suggestions in the comments below. I have no idea what it is. I primed the spirit thingy single with can and black and white as I did with the witch on the base. Nothing special. I'm doing my basic sketch on the spirit while he's not attached to the base to be able to bring color everywhere. Plan is to glue him to the base at the end of the session and then work with the full picture from there on. Let's see where this goes. Let's see where this goes. Aha, aha. Not funny. I even thought it would be a good idea to wear a glove while touching it. I also want to be a good example to all of you. Usually without the camera, I would possibly not use a glove at all. Yet I was amazed how professional this looks in an instant. Getting my colors ready. Mixing the tones I want and keep on trucking onto good music until my sketch was placed. Remember the first layer is, is one for sketching, while the second layer has more opacity, coverage and manifests your idea. Remember the first layer is, is one for sketching, while the second layer has more opacity, coverage and manifests your idea.
bringing both together. After the paint was dry, I took my time to position the spirit properly and then glued it in place. If I got to glue something carefully, I often use a toothpick to pick up glue and then place it with care where I need it. Accelerator can help you to fix this faster and stronger. Jingling. The toothpick is one of the most underrated tools in our hobby. It is majestic. See this ebook in my Etsy shop to learn about the 36 chambers of the toothpick in miniature painting. Jingling. Now that the full sketch is ready, I'm very much looking forward to part 4 and further explanations for you. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this part. Do not forget to subscribe and press thumbs up and write a comment down below. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon. With your financial help, I'm able to take time to create such videos. Roman out. Keep on happy painting. Bye bye. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now we go Introduction Bringing both together Introduction <sighs> Intro Introduction Introduction Intro Introduction. Introduction.